Bo, who is that? And why does he just keep staring at me? I should probably just walk away. That was a little weird, guys, but in today's video, I'll be showing you guys how you can make your own stalker in Roblox Studio. It's a little bit weird, but it's still cool in how it works. Now, before we even do anything, we need to insert our stalker or our rig. So, I'm going to go to Avatar up here, and then go to Rig Builder, and I'm going to go to Block Avatar, and here's our rig. He is going to serve as our stalker for right now and then we are going to go to starter player starter player scripts insert a local script okay so we need to get quite a few things we're going to get rid of this print statement and we're first going to get the run service we are then going to get our player from the local player and then we're going to get our rig so game.workspace wait for child rig we are then going to get our rigs neck attachment because in all like bodies and stuff like that like uh actual animated rigs in the uh head is a neck motor 6d which is the neck attachment so we are going to need to get that so local neck is equal to rig wafer child uh head oh, whoops and then wafer child neck all right so we got a rig our run service player rig and neck we are then going to get the C, uh, C frame of the C0 attachment in that neck, or like the C frame, uh, the C0 of the neck, motor 6D. So C frame 0 is equal to neck dot C0. Okay, so we are then just going to wait one second. I'll tell you guys in a minute why we are doing this. And then we're going to go down to run service, and we're going to get run service, and we're going to say render stepped colon connect function go down and roblox should have this ends thing for you now why is roblox being like this the autocomplete feature is really annoying but i don't know if you guys seen that but it's being really annoying i really have to disable it but i'll get to that in a little bit and then in our run service thing we're going to get a variable we're going to call it unit and then it's going to be equal to these parentheses but we're going to make it a negative so like negative parentheses we are then going to say in the parentheses rig dot primary part dot c frame dot position minus player dot character dot primary part dot position. And then outside of the parentheses, we are going to say dot unit. Okay? And then we're going to say neck dot c0 will be equal to c frame 0 times c frame dot new. And in here, we are going to say vector3.0, comma, unit. And this unit line right here is basically telling the script in which direction uh, our next C0 attachment should be looking at. So down here, uh, there's position orientation. It's basically telling the script where to look at. And here we are setting it. Heading back to this task.wait1, we are doing this uh, to ensure everything is loaded in our game before we start actually doing stuff, okay? Because run service our render stepped starts firing right away, and if you don't know, this runs every frame, which is extremely fast, which probably means things aren't loaded yet. So we're going to say task.wait1 before we actually start doing this so it waits one second to guarantee everything is loaded in our game before doing the actions you can then go into your game and we will see that the rig is looking wherever we go even he can turn his head now let's say you don't want this well that is what i'm going to next so to make it if you want the rig to not look uh behind him because it may look a little weird well what we are going to do is take this code copy it or you know just copy it or put it down here for right now and in here we are going to get something where i'm gonna uh, make a variable called is in front and this is some pretty cool stuff so i'm gonna say local is in front is equal to rig dot primary part dot c frame colon two object space player dot character dot primary part dot c frame 
and outside of these parentheses of two object space, we're going to say dot z, and then less than zero. All right. So this is checking to see if uh, the character is basically in front or behind. Okay. So when we have this, we're going to say if is in front, then. And in here, ignore that <laughs> Roblox AI stuff. We're going to copy our things down here and get rid of all that and then put it uh, in is in front. And there you guys go. Going into your guys' game, you'll see that he still follows us with his head. But when we go behind him, his head stays there and doesn't actually look behind him. And I can go to the other side. He still does the same thing. And everything works all good. If you guys wanted to make him look spooky like a demon or ghost or whatever, like I had at the beginning of the video, uh, you guys can do that too. All you have to do is go to your rig, and there should be a body colors, uh, um, like properties thing right here. And in here, it houses all of the colors. Because if you just change the colors naturally like this, and actually go into the game, it won't save. Like, it's weird. Like, see, it, it doesn't save it. It doesn't save the colors. So, it doing it in studio doesn't, like, actually set it. But this body colors property actually makes it so it's set. So, I'm going to um change all of these to black. And I'll be right back when I do this. By the way, guys, when you're doing this, you don't have to set, like, the colors, uh, you know, above it. If you just go to the one without the text, like with the numbers, and just do it like this, uh, you can do that too, and it sets the top one as well, if that helps you guys out. So we've changed all the body colors, and now it looks like this. I've changed it to the darker color you can get in Roblox Studio. Now we're going to give it the red eyes that I had. Well, I actually didn't even make that face. You just want to go up to the toolbox, go to images, like go to models and click on images and then type in red eyes and it will give you images of red eyes like this. Um, there's some different ones you guys can use, but I was using these red glowing ones right here. These, um, these ones down here, I actually might try in a little bit, but I'm going to do this first one. I'm going to right click. And when you right click, you, you have three options. And at the bottom, it says copy asset ID. You want to copy it. Uh, exit out of there for now. And then go to the dummy's head. And in there should be an image. Um, because regular Roblox characters should already have an image. Uh, like a decal for the face. And in here, I'm going to put the texture as the thing I copied. Alright, when I do that, then we have the red glowing eyes and even if you guys want to take it to the very next level uh to make everything nighttime what i did was in the toolbox i'm gonna go back to models and if you type in night there's all these night uh sky boxes and i use like this scary night sky one right here and here it is um something i did was just move the sun i have a plug in and i moved the sun to be like up above here just to make it look a little bit better and I removed sun rays so you can't actually see the sun now to make it look less uh, or more dark I set the base plates color to be darker and this is basically how I did the intro um, to make everything look dark and creepy and whatnot this should work for all uh, you know characters if you guys set it up like the actual Roblox um, characters uh, you need the neck attachment and all that, but uh, I think most characters are set up the same or relatively the same and have all the Motor 60s and whatnot. So you guys should be fine. This should work with multiple characters, but I'm actually not 100% sure because I've only tried to throw blocks this rig. But yeah, guys, that was today's video. If you guys did learn some things from this video or you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.